Driven well by McKinstry here to left center field, and it is gone. McKinstry with an opposite field home run, furthering his case to be back here before too long. He has a very unique way of kind of clearing and dropping the head of the bat on the ball. Front side, the lower half spins very quickly, but he keeps the upper half in and close. Maintains his spine angle, but the lower half is really twisting and allows him to clear and really hit that ball hard. All right, thanks for joining us today on Go Ed Tech Go. Today we have Zach McKinstry, uh, Los Angeles Dodger. Um, thanks for joining us today, Zach. We appreciate you taking some time out on your first day of spring training. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, glad to be here. Can you uh, just give us a little rundown for, you know, maybe some people who don't know professional baseball players, you know, kind of where you started, how you kind of got to where you are, um, and then how you ended up, um, you know, spring training with the LA Dodgers. Do you want to know the whole story? Do you want to know like the pref professional side, college side, like, I think, I think, you know, just because we're talking to some students, maybe, you know, talk about, you know, your high school, like kind of take us through that run, how you okay. started and how you, where you are now. Yeah. So um, when I was really young, I just enjoyed baseball. I loved being around it. My dad played every Sunday. Um, we were at the baseball park. He'd play two nine inning games. Um, so I just kind of fell in love with it there and then uh, took it into, you know, I was playing it little league and then, uh travel baseball and then into high school my dad was my coach um in fort wayne indiana uh and then i ended up going to central michigan uh signed uh, my letter of intent to go there as a I think I, I was a sophomore um in high school i uh, got a pretty good scholarship to attend there so uh, i mean you can't turn down a big scholarship in baseball um, so I ended up going to Central Michigan for two years, uh, then was drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers in the 33rd round, uh, 1,001 pick, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, uh, so I think it was about a month of like negotiations between our, my agent and the Dodgers to get me finally to sign. Um, once I signed, I went down, came down here to uh, Arizona uh, did my physical, all that kind of stuff, and then jumped kind of right into it, um, baseball stuff, basically every day till the end of uh, September, or the middle of September, uh, played with uh, the Great Lakes Loons up in Mich Midland, Michigan, so I kind of went back home, um, it was pretty cool, it's like 30 minutes from my college, and then, uh, yeah, ever since then, I mean, I went back to Great Lakes, kind of just up and down through the minor league system, um, finally found uh, something that kind of worked for me. Uh, everything kind of clicked all at once. Uh, 2019, um, had a really good year, made the 40 man that off season. Uh, was in spring, uh, spring, big league spring training last year. Um, and then ended up debuting uh, in September with the Dodgers and back on the, back on the, uh, fighting for a position to be making the, make, making the team again this year. Great. That's awesome. That's really exciting, man. We're excited for you. Thank you. I appreciate <clears throat> so, it. The project that our students are going to be working on, Train a Champion, deals with a lot of different aspects of training someone to be a professional, what they're doing, or successful in their pursuits. And so we're going to direct these questions towards you and how you train to be a champion. And so the first category we're going to talk about is in the, the area of diet. So thinking during regular season, so during regular season, traveling, everything else, is there a prescribed diet for you? And if so, what are the key parts of it? So every day we have like a main meal, kind of like a main course. Uh, you get to kind of choose when you go to the field. Um, you get there, they have lunch already made for you, kind of. Uh, so you get to like choose what you kind of want to eat. They'll have like a really healthy meal that's like gluten-free dairy-free like all that stuff or uh, all organic food and then they'll have like there's some dairy in it but it's still healthy for you like they have their greens and all that and then you know you can have like a like a burger or 
if you want a burger or nachos or you name it, you can do that as well. Um, they don't really, you know, get mad at you if you, you go and eat something bad. Um, but for me, I try to eat a little bit healthier. Um, my stomach's kind of throws off, throws it off when I have some dairy stuff. So I try not to eat as much cheese or dairy products before games. Um, maybe after the game, uh, I'll eat some, something with cheese on it or whatever it may be. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, uh, nutrition with the Dodgers is huge. Uh, coming up, I mean, sweet potatoes, the first time I ever ate sweet potatoes was when I was a, first became a Dodger. I had no idea what they were. Um, <laughs> big, big advocate for, like, avocados and, you know, all that, all that, the good foods. And I love spinach and uh, try to do, like, if I do have a burger, have, like, a lettuce wrap um, instead of, like, the buns. Um I know I'm kind of still younger. I'm more of an athlete. So uh, the carbs are always good for you too because it uh, helps with energy. Um, it stores the energy uh, for you. And uh, I mean, I'm just kind of, I kind of am like a big nutrition guy, but I also like my pizza. Uh, I love pizza. I like pasta. So I'll have that every now and then. Nice. Seems like you have quite the flexible diet for people we've talked to before, other athletes. They're very, it seems like more, more regimented. Um, but even with that in mind, though, are there any foods that they just say, hey, look it, stay away from this? Uh, I mean, that's more probably like the pizza, like snacks, like, you know, if you want cookies or whatever it is. Uh, they have like organic brownies and stuff like that that they put out. Like, they try to like push you onto the good stuff. And then, like, you know, you can do it on your own if you want to have like, an ice cream or something like that. What about like a pre-game meal? Like but the night before maybe a morning game or like the meal you have before an evening game? What's kind of like that pre-game meal that you eat? Uh, so we play it every day. So, I mean, my favorite pre-game meal, I would say post-game, like night before, would probably be like lasagna or like a spaghetti. Uh, I like the Italian food. <laughs> Is the, uh, is, is the food any different when you get out with LA Dodgers as opposed to when, you, when you're down in the lower, in the lower league? Does the food get better? Yeah, I'm better? saying, does the food, <laughs> do, they, do they take care of you a little bit better once you're at Chavez Ravine or, you know? Uh, yeah, so they actually have cooks at the, fee, at the stadium, uh, at Dodger Stadium. And in, like, AAA, like, they bring in, like, the catered food and stuff like that. Or AA, they just have, like, a, a certain – place they order it from and get a certain amount nice so um with that topic of diet is there a difference you're at spring training now um is there a difference between spring training food as far as what you can eat um and and postseason preseason is there like this regiment that you go through or is it just kind of the same all the way through um i try to keep it pretty kind of the same uh i might eat Maybe, you know, pizza more often in the off season or uh, just trying to get more food in my body because that's the time you're supposed to be make, gaining weight and coming back with a stronger frame and, like, you aren't playing as much. So they really want you to bulk up maybe a little bit. And But you also have to think about your joints. You don't want to get too big, uh, too fast, and then you can't move around. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of a constant, like, I don't know, teeter totter. If you want, like, you gotta keep it even uh, as much as you possibly can. That makes sense. <clears throat> okay, so a little bit of a change of direction here with exercise. Mm -hmm. So I know you have spring training now. I know with baseball players, it's interesting because you're you have your on-field train that you train to be a you know a ball player there, but you're also training as a hitter. So there's kind of the two different sides to it. So as a professional ball player, you, what are some of the areas that your trainers tend to focus on um, during your exercise program? Um, mostly legs and um, back because in baseball, you push a lot. Um, so, I mean, legs, you have to, have, you're playing 162 games. So you really have to have your legs underneath you and like strong um, to be able to, to play 160 games and just stand on your feet for, you know, a four inning or a four hour game, five hour game sometimes. So, um, for 162 games, I mean, in 180 days too. So, I mean, it's, it's every day, it's constant. 
um, just keeping your legs strong. We do a lot of like, uh, I mean, when we first get to spring training, um, they do like this body movement tests and all of our physicals and it's called, uh, there's this test they do, it's called FMS. Um, just basically tests like if you can squat with a bar above your head, how far down can you go? And like, how far do you rotate? Um, rotation's huge in baseball also. Uh, and then, yeah, it's kind of, uh, yeah. And then they do your body fat, um, see where you're at. If, you, if they tell you, hey, look, you gotta focus on losing your body fat, um, which I've never had really the issue with that. Mine's more the other way, I need to gain weight. <laughs> but, <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, every day, uh, you're trying you work out four to five times a week in the off season, um, get back in the season, spring training, your, your lifts are going to go like the weight is going to be way different. Um, you're going to maybe go for more reps instead of heavier reps. Um, like the off season, I, I think it was like sets of three and like five reps and then like really heavy. And then in the off or during the season, it's probably 10 reps, really lightweight, um, even with everything basically is that way. So, uh, and I'll probably cut it down to like two, maybe three times a week during the season instead of four to five times a week in the off season. Great. So can you just talk a little bit about how you train to develop the skills that you need to be a professional baseball player? You talked a little bit about the, you know, the exercise and things like that. And, other people we've talked about said, you know, the off season is kind of not really an off season, right? Right. So how do you, no. how do you take that and develop those skills during all of the season long to, to have the skills you need to be a, a major league baseball player? Yeah, definitely the off season. I mean, you have three months to get your body as ready as possible for 162 games, 142 games if you're in the minor league season, uh, in the minor league. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely hard to, get that motivation you don't have any coaches around you it's just you in the weight room or you in the cage and maybe a tosser or something so you really got to get motivated yourself motivated uh to be better um for your team the next year and uh fulfill those expectations from the higher higher ups in the in the organization um to come back ready to ready to compete in spring training yeah it's really just doing what people aren't seeing right yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's the best part. I think that's, that's what you kind of fall in love with. If you're a professional athlete, like uh, you, you fall in love with the process and like what it, what it's taking you to get to that level. Very cool. <clears throat> so this is probably a big part of the exercise and the training and everything else with it, especially during the season is the idea of hydration. So how do you address the need for proper hyd hydration during a game, practice, training, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'll show you right here. I have my hydro flask behind my <laughs> my phone. It's what's holding it up right now. But also we have a bunch of like uh, aminos and uh, electrolytes. Uh, I do that before when I get right. When the first thing I do when I get to the field, I go get an electrolyte packet, pour it in my water. Uh, drink that um, and then at the very end of the day I do it again I have the BCAAs and electrolytes put that in a drink drink it on the way on the drive home and then throughout the day just drinking as much water and I know I'm dehydrated if I'm thirsty so I try not to get thirsty and just keep drinking water especially out in Arizona it's hot here <laughs> yeah and you guys really move from one spot to another a lot so you could be playing in california today and you could be in michigan you know you'd be somewhere else and it could be really humid really hot it's yeah. the changing is so crazy over that amount of time and you're talking about a lot of games yeah have, with that said have you ever experienced a dip in performance because you didn't plan ahead and do some of that that hydration stuff yeah i mean you see that a lot um your body just kind of starts to get tired and shut down a little bit the muscles aren't working the right way um i mean you can you can tell right away if you're dehydrated you start getting a little shaky uh for me anyways i start getting a little shaky and i feel like i'm hungry but i probably just don't have enough wa enough water because i had eaten throughout the day and uh i mean we always have food in the clubhouse so there's 
no way I'm hungry. <laughs> and we're always eating on the bench. So uh, they're, they're definitely keeping us fueled. And uh, you just got to keep stay on top of the hydration part. Yeah, you talked a little bit about testing when you go into FMS and um, some of that BMI stuff. Can you talk a little bit about what that looks like? You show up to the first day of spring training. Are they doing testing there? What type of testing are they doing? Are they doing it before? What are some tests that they take you through kind of to get a baseline to see where you are? Yeah, so FMS is like a one to five. And um, so like three is typical for like an, a, a, a pro athlete. Uh, it's pretty average uh, around a three. Um, and then they just base off the so the different movements that you're doing. So like you'll put the bar behind your your back, you'll move, try to like rotate, rotate, and then you'll like touch your hands behind. They just kind of like measure different uh, uh, muscles and uh, stretching. Um, and then they'll do strength stuff as well. So like you'll do a squat with a bar over your head, and then you'll put your feet on top of the uh, on top of the FMS board do another squat, see which one's easier. Um, you'll do a lunge. You'll put your feet out as far as your um, ankle to your knee. I think it's like 18 inches for me. You put uh, your front foot out on the 18 inch mark and then you go into a lunge and you have to hit your knee to the ground, come up three times uh, kind of thing. And then they'll do like push ups. So like you start at a regular push up, you do a push up, you put your hands on your shoulder, uh, right at like your shoulder level do a push up and then up like on your eyebrows and do a push up and then they're just measuring like uh your how, how your muscles work and how your body works in different ways and then they'll do like hip stuff ankle stuff for that so like they'll put you on a on a, like a basically a ruler on the ground see how far you can get your um how far you can get your foot away from the wall and touch the knee on the wall mm -hmm. kind of thing so it it measures how far uh I guess how flexible your calf kind of is and then yeah and then hip stuff um lots of hip stuff in baseball because i mean once you get older like you'll find your hips are probably always the reason why your body's hurting <laughs> i have anyways like every time we have a bus ride i'm like hey pop my hips out because i know my back's gonna hurt tomorrow or my shoulder's gonna hurt because my hips are off or my swing won't be right because my hips not in the right spot so uh, hips are always a, a massive part in baseball and you got to make sure they're keeping them loose, uh, roll them out every day. Um, uh, there's like these little lacrosse balls, put that in there, lay on it for five minutes, roll it out, switch to the other side, roll it out for five minutes. You're only as good as your hips. So the hips don't lie. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're talking about that's the power, right? Power right yeah. there in the hips. That swing, right? Yep. It's funny yep. talking about rolling them out because I coach cross country and track and we try and get our kids <laughs> to roll them out. And man, they get on there and they're like, this is painful. I didn't even know it was in pain. And you're like, yep, you got to make sure you get roll those out. Yeah. And the more you do them, the, the more like your body like can sustain. Like, so I'm, I've moved from like a soft foam roller to like a PVC pipe to now I'm using like lacrosse balls because I can't even feel it on when I use a PVC pipe. Well, I know it's a lot of these uh, trainings and testing and everything else. It's meant to help track obviously your progress, but it really just know where you're at in the hopes of preventing injuries as well. So um, with that said, what kind of like medical and athletic professionals do you work with to maintain that physical health and that high level of performance and prevent injuries at the same time? Like who do you work with? Uh, we have physical trainers. We have trainers that go through a, every year. They're re up in their um, training stuff. I even honestly, I don't really know all their positions. I guess sorry. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we have we have PTs. We have trainers, and then we just have like medical trainers. Um, they all work really close together, so it's hard to tell them like tell like the difference between which one's which. We have rehab PT guys. Um, we have a bunch of stuff. Uh, we have doctors. Uh, I mean, they're a call, phone call away if you need them uh, to come and look at something. But um, I mean, we have access to just about anything we really need. Yeah, you've been doing this a long time. You talked about going from Little League all the way till now. 
Um, has there any been, been any time in your professional career or maybe even your high school or, or lower where you've had injuries that you had to really kind of work through and rehab? And if so, what are some of those things that you, you know, had to come back from? Uh, I have some little minor injuries. Uh, I had, I tore my, um, T U F or T C F F or something in my wrist uh, a few years ago. I don't really know the ligament. Um, but I can, it hurt any kind of weight pushing down on it. I couldn't do any, like any bench press or anything. I heard it bench pressing. Um, and I couldn't swing a bat it kind of hurt. So I went down to, came down here actually a little early. Um, got in there with our PT, uh, beat it up a little bit. Um, uh, did some stem, did some like dry needling, uh, with the stem just a bunch of stuff with the forearm, just stretching it out, uh, letting it rest uh, for two or three days, coming back, getting it stretched out, needles. Um, I mean, you name it, we did it. Uh, the Mark Pros, uh, just heat it up, keep it hot. At the end of the day, ice it, heat it, ice it. Um, just staying on top of it. Uh, also, uh, tore ligament in my... Um, throwing hand, re- uh, middle finger. Um, uh, I was diving in the second base on a stolen base. I stole the base, played the next five innings. They taped it up. Uh, the tape started falling off because my finger was so swollen. Um, then I ended up having to sit out for a month. Uh, that, <laughs> that one kind of hurt. Uh, that was my third year in the same level, and I was hitting like very well at that time. And I just did not want to stop playing. And I uh, got to sit around for a little bit, talk baseball, talk hitting, came back even stronger. Um, got to work out my legs a lot. Uh, a lot of the guys were starting to get tired. So I uh, came back stronger than a lot of the people were and felt really good. Um, that took a lot of time. That took a lot of icing, just kind of just sitting around and not doing anything. That one kind of kind of sucked. But uh, I don't mean to use that word, but it, yeah. it was, it was, a uh, time consuming and, uh, and it was just a middle finger. Like I could just cut it off, please. <laughs> Kinda, uh, but we ended up going, uh, just icing it and compression and just keeping everything tight in there, uh, moving all the fluid out of there. And I stayed at the affiliate for that one. So it wasn't as bad. We have a sports med class here, um, and so they'll love to hear those stories. <laughs> yeah, just a lot of time, time consuming, that's for sure. Definitely. Um, so with that injury and with injuries that you've had over the years, <clears throat> what does it really look like to kind of track the progress from, okay, you got to sit out because your finger is really bad and you have this injury in there. What does the progress look like from that moment to then going back and playing at full capacity? Um, so I really couldn't swing a bat. I couldn't really hold or like grip a bat or even throw. So, uh, it was really my, just my grip strength at that point that I needed to work on. So we were doing a lot of different grip strength things. And once my grip strength started coming back, I started to realize, like started seeing like, oh, now I can throw a ball straight or it's not tailing as much now, like as it was before it felt like my finger was like dangling off. <laughs> so, um, so we just taped it together. And I could go out and throw with three fingers. Uh, and then, yeah, it was just like a slow, uh, that was like week two or three of just tape it together. Uh, started throwing with that, started hitting a little bit, just light off the tee or maybe some tea or uh, tennis balls. Um, don't, don't really have to, you know, hit baseballs until uh, I think it was like week five when I started playing. So uh, week three, I started swinging. And then uh, week four, I started hitting like underhand slower. And then week five, I think I started hitting like maybe off a pitch, off a coach. And then uh, towards the end of that week, I was hitting off the machine. And then they sent, I think they sent me back down to Arizona for a week to get some games, some rehab games. And then I got to play again. Great. So with that said, I know you have, uh, you're talking a little bit about kind of the injury prevention and coming back. Um, are there any medications or supplements? You talked a little bit about electrolytes and things like that. Are there things that you take 
kind of as you move through to kind of help with some of that, not performing enhancing, but just like maybe some supplements that, you know, baseball players take to help them kind of, you know, uh, along in the process. Yeah, definitely. I take my multivitamins, my omegas, my, uh, what, just uh, vitamin D just to help my immune system, especially right now. Um, Just stuff like that. And then we also have like a bunch of stuff in our clubhouse. I mean, you walk into the weight room, you go, there's like this closet. It's all NSF approved. Like it has to be or else it's not allowed to be in our clubhouse. Um, But I mean, we have a lot of different uh, stuff. I just take the BCAAs and the electrolytes. I don't, I don't go too far off the edge with everything. I used to do like protein shakes and stuff like that. Um, then I kind of got to my goal weight. I was like, I don't really want to get any bigger. I did the carb load stuff when I was a little younger. I mean, I was 175 pounds when I was drafted. So, uh, now I'm 195 and like right where I want to be. So I don't really have to do much of that anymore. Um, in regard to those vitamin supplements for you, I mean, you said you kind of keep it minimum anyways. Um, but does it change ever during kind of like during the season, postseason, preseason, spring training, that kind of stuff? Uh, kind of changes. Um, I mean, they try to send us stuff in the off season, but if you don't have access to it, uh, I mean, you can go to the, go shopping and get it. But uh, it, it kind of I feel more comfortable when I get it from the team because I know it's the right thing. I know that they're they've done their research, not saying that I'm lazy and can't do my research. But um, they, I mean, that's why they get paid to be able to tell us what we should take and those different, what those like am- aminos and all those things do and like how they help you and when you should take them. Um, like I, I'll go up to the train or one of our uh, strength coaches and say, hey, like I'm a little fatigued, like after the workout today, anything I should take with my, uh, with my BCAAs and my electrolytes and they'll just hear uh, you know, they'll make a concoction and it's like green and you're like, oh, this looks terrible. And then you just drink it and come back the next day and you feel ready to go again. We heard about beet juice from one of the athletes. Oh, and yeah, said, oh there's, it's so good, but it does not taste good. <laughs> yeah, it is. I, I had a, a little bit last year, some beet juice in the mornings and uh, ginger, I think. And there's some... We have like these little shots, basically little shot glasses. Um, and there was like a bunch of stuff in them for, for like morning. Like we were getting up at like 5 a.m. to go and, and early in the morning. I was like, yeah, I'll just take one of these. It's really healthy for you. It's like all um, all like of the power foods in there yeah. and take that. It's, it's really good. And then I also started taking, um, I don't know, it's like a supplement. It's all green. It's like called something greens and it's just a bunch of superfoods that um that they give you i can i can take a picture and send it to you guys if you want it <laughs> it's it's pretty cool i don't really know what it's called i just started taking it the other day it looked i mean it tastes really good and i take it with my electrolytes so um yeah it's an easy supplement for for some veggies it's always good when it tastes good too yeah exactly so, so back, uh <laughs> We know that everybody thinks being a professional athlete is this glorious thing. It's so great. It's wonderful. But we know that you have stressors like anybody else. And right now we're doing some mental health stuff with our students. As you can imagine, this time of year, you know, being at home for a full year, it's taking a toll on some people. Um, what are some mental health stressors that you deal with as a professional athlete? Um, meditation. Uh, before bed, I'll sit in bed and just look at the, at the at the ceiling and do my breathing, my breathing exercises um, that I've been doing for a while now. Uh, it just kind of gets me calm. I do them in the box as well, like in the batter's box, or if I'm really nervous before in a bat, like a later a bat, I'll just sit there and look at my bat and just breathe in for four seconds, hold it, breathe out for four seconds, just trying to get my heart rate to slow down, uh, just get my feet underneath me and my legs to not feel heavy and or gone in some <laughs> situations. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, just being able to, to center, center yourself and uh, bring yourself back to reality. Uh, maybe it's a smell that you, you smell at the field or maybe it's a, 
something you look at the at the stars or you look at a light and it just it triggers you back into into reality and um you know you're back focused on the game instead of on your last at bat so so there's a really great like coping strategy <clears throat> but in terms of like being a ball player right now what are certain things you feel like are like the major stresses on you that yeah, make um, it yeah go, uh sorry um just right now i'm trying to make the team uh last year i i got a little taste and uh this year they they didn't recite kk um they have big plans for me so uh just you know i i try not to think about it as much um i i have a roommate we talk a lot um my girlfriend's here uh we talk she played softball so she gets it um uh, we we just talk a lot. Um, call my parents, uh, tell them how my day was. Uh, just you know, try to talk to people that kind of calm me down. My agent's a really good one. Uh, we're really close, so um, he'll he'll talk to me and t- give me confidence. Uh, tell me that I'm a you know I'm the competition and don't don't think about them as competition. They're trying to get your job, um, stuff like that. Uh, I mean, is that what you guys are looking for? I don't I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. For sure. For sure. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and I would imagine, you know, trying to make that team, you know, things always, things out of your control. You know, you have all of these ways, your meditation, you know, it, it's interesting to me that you said smell because we haven't heard that from anybody, but I would imagine <laughs> that you have these smells that take you back to the ballpark or back to when you were a little kid in the dugout. You know, you said your dad coached you. I'm sure there's times where you, you know, you can take yourself back to those and that's a comforting spot for you to be. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I try to use as many senses as possible, like how you feel. And um, if you're cold, like, oh, I feel cold. And then you're you're just not really there anymore. You're kind of like, oh, I'm cold. Like I, I could be walking on like on the beach right now, you know, like like you feel the wind or something. Just try to just trying to get your focus off of uh, just for a split second off of like, uh, the game or if the game's getting too like frustrating maybe you know sit down with a teammate have a beer i mean i know it's this is a high school so <laughs> uh you know it i don't i'm not like an avid drinker but um i i sometimes it, it helps to have somebody to talk to and uh clear your space clear clear everything in your head yeah get everything out That's there great. on the table yeah, and that's that's great advice um, for for anybody who just has a way to deal with them. So, with that said, the advice um, that you're giving, um, I'm the high school athletic director, and so you know we talk to lots of athletes all the time. What's some advice that you would give a high school athlete who wants to become a professional, or maybe somebody who wants to work in a professional baseball um, realm as a trainer or whatever it might be? What's some advice you would give them? Um. Be true to yourself. Uh, know what level like you're really shooting for. Maybe even if people laugh at you, that's fine. If like people laughed at me, I think what was it three years ago when I said I'm gonna hit 20 home runs this year, and I hadn't hit seven before that. So uh, I mean, you just have to you have to make high high goals for yourself. You have to keep yourself uh, accountable for those goals. Um, just uh, keep pushing yourself. Uh, even when people are like, "Hey, man, let's go do this." No, I have to do this. Um, I have to. I have to get my push-ups in, or I have to get my uh, studying it done because I was at the gym for too long. I need to study instead of you know going out with your friends and uh, you know having or causing some havoc or whatever it is. I, I understand. I did. I loved hanging out with my friends in high school and college, um, but at the same time, sometimes you gotta. You gotta distance yourself from them and uh, shoot for shoot for the stars and go for it. If you if you're not 100 percent into it, it's probably not the thing for you. And uh, I mean that's that's how I always looked at it. I wasn't I was I was a two sport athlete. I liked football. I loved baseball. Um, and our our football coach knew that and he supported me through that. And I almost quit football my senior year, which is everybody's big year. I mean, if you're a football player or any sport um, and you play for the first three years and you don't play and you're kind of a starter uh, that senior year, it's tough. But um, I ended up staying with the team. Our coach even offered me to leave 
and go to this tournament because it was big for like drafts, draft stuff. And I said, no, you know what? I appreciate that, but I'm going to stay and uh, fight it out with these guys on the football field instead of, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to play football and have fun. Uh, and then I'm going to go to college and, uh, you know, do it there a hundred percent of the time. So, um, yeah, I mean, once you're a hundred percent dedicated to that one thing, it's going to take you a long way in, in life and uh, just follow it. It's funny because every single athlete that we've talked to has said that they were multi-sport athletes and how important it was to be a multi-sport athlete to gain skills and not just to get kind of pigeonholed into one thing. So hmm. I appreciate that honesty with that because we hear that all the time. So uh, Zach, we know you're, we know you're busy. Uh, it's your first day out at spring training and you're just getting back. So we really do appreciate you spending some time with us and talking to our students about what it's like to be a champion. And we hope the best for you. And we're going to be following you all season long. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. All right thank you, Zach. Yeah, I'm in my zone. I'm feeling it. Stop blowing my buzz. Quit killing